Good evening, ladies. Hi. It's Great. good to see you again. Great, actually. We've missed you. Yes, welcome back. <laughs> You know, we weren't, it wasn't the same without you. I know, mahirap yung wala. It was more fun. Don't joke. Just joke. Yung wala ka, ikaw ang pag... Yeah, 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 that's right. No, but we really didn't talk about it. We did miss you. Yeah. That's, that's a fact. So we're glad you're back. Thank you. A lot of things were happening while you were gone. I was wondering, were you able to keep track of the impeachment? Yeah. I know, I was in the middle of nowhere. I had to search for an internet connection. Yeah, as I say, you missed a lot. But you do know that there were three senators who voted to acquit. Yeah, I know. Arroyo and uh, Marcos pa on the same <laughs> team now. But you know, I wonder what's going to happen to their political careers. After this. Yeah. After well, this you know time. what? That will be answered by our guest this evening, one of the three senators who voted to acquit CJ Corona. Friends, patikim lang yan. Marami pang chika coming up. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. It's time for Mixing Tales and Serving Chats. This is Cocktails. Cocktails. Nakatutok talaga ang mga Pinoy sa trial, di ba? Yeah, especially when it came to verdict time. Mm -hmm. But you know, I must say that Senator Juan Ponce Enrile was so brilliant. Kind of like our Vic here. <laughs> That's true! <laughs> Bago pa mapunta sa bolahan ito, we'll be joined by Senator Bongbong Marcos when we return. I know that like Lady Justice, we shall find solace in the fact that this decision, though maybe not popular, was fair, impartial, and just. I vote to acquit the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Halos naging sing kontrobersyal ng kanyang pangalan ang kanyang pagboto na maakwit si Chief Justice Corona sa katatapos lamang na makasaysayang impeachment trial. Adjourn sine die. Si Senator Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Ang uniko iho ni dating Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos at ni Imelda Romualdez Marcos. He grew up in the world of politics and like his parents, he was never out of the spotlight. Many say he exudes the same charisma as his father. Pero, sino nga ba si Bongbong hiwalay sa pangalan at personalidad ng kanyang ama? All, uh, all the, uh, festivities here. Welcome to Cocktails, Senator. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you very here. much for having yeah. me. It's a very busy time for you, fresh from the very long impeachment trial. Yes. Are you glad it's over? Yes, uh, because we, we can now get back to our regular legislative work, which has been uh, deferred uh, for what? How, almost half a year now, so uh, we have a lot of catching up to do. But uh, yes, uh, it, it, it's, it's done and uh, we get, that gives us a, a little bit more time to, uh, to as I said, do the, the regular business that we normally do. How do you feel? I mean, you obviously are one of the three who voted mm -hmm. and uh, lost. And my sisters call us the three mouseketeers. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel that there's a possible backlash for 2016 with your well, acquit uh, vote? I don't know. I, I, I simply don't think about it in those terms. I, I never did. And, um, you know, the, 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 the trial was what was happening in court, in the impeachment court. And that, for me, I tried very, very hard to make sure that the decision that we, I made, anyway, the vote that I, I cast, would be on the basis of what I saw and heard in, in, in court. So. The fact that it's popular, it's unpopular, is, uh, really did not enter into it. Now, maybe it's because I'm not a re-electionist in 2013. I'm not a candidate in 2013. And maybe that's a consideration for others. It's a valid consideration. Yes. I mean, we, we are in politics after all. But since I, maybe I, I have that luxury of, of being able to just uh, not bother about the, the, the surveys and just do, do what I had to, what I felt I had to do. 
Don't you find it ironic that uh, Senator Joker Arroyo and Cory Aquino's speechwriter Teddy Boy Loxin, yeah. you're now on the same page? Yeah, well, you know, these are, what do they say about politics? Makes for strange bedfellows, right? Yeah. So, but I think, you know, these are people who have been working in government for such a long time. And in terms of, in Ted, Teddy Boy's case, he has been a commentator, he has been a congressman. He has, so, you know, you will inevitably, some, if, some, if there are times that you don't agree and are on opposite sides, there will also be other times when you happen to be on the same side of an issue. So, uh, we are finding ourselves more and more often on the same side and of the issues. very publicly, because uh, Teddy looks in on Twitter, is showing you so much love. Oh, but he, 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 has, been, he has been so supportive and so kind. And I've been watching some of his, some of his uh, commentary. And people should listen because he, he, he has a lot to say and, and, and some of it is very, is quite important and correct. You know? Pinoy seems to be more personally peeved against Gloria Arroyo than the Marcos Eseni. So what do you account this? I, I don't know. I'm just happy that we're, out of the, we're, all, we're, all, we're not on the radar anymore, or at least less so. So uh, I guess because he, he, he truly feels that you have to dispose of the elements, the corrupt, the, the corrupt elements, and to be seen to do it. I guess it's, there's, there's, a, there's an element of Caesar's wife in there, is that not only to be good, but to be seen to be good. So that's why they did all this, this public display. But again, uh, since we were not the preceding government, then I suppose uh, we dodged the bullet this time. For now, anyway. <laughs> Your wife, uh, her law partner is the executive secretary of Pinoy. Sure. So that is a direct line mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to Noy Noy, to President Noy Noy. Uh, were you ever, was there ever a chance to be friendly? Did you ever, you know? You know, it's funny that uh, we have been thrown together in this old, and there's, there's Marcos Aquino, Aquino Marcos all the time. But the fact of the matter is, is I have been in the same room with the president maybe three times in my entire life. The first time I shook his hand or even met him personally was about three years ago. We happened to show up at the restaurant opening, mm -hmm. the same restaurant opening. Since then, mga ceremonial, mga ceremonial, may program, ganyan, I'll run into him. But we don't know each other at all, at all. And I, I don't know why people assume that we somehow have known each other for years and years, but we've, we don't know each other at all. So what's preventing the Marcoses and the Pinoy government from reaching a universal settlement on, on the Marcos cases? Well, I'd have to say that you have to ask the government why, because we have been, since uh, 86, we have been telling every single government that I, we truly believe that the only way to settle all of these cases is through a universal settlement. And what are you willing to propose or to give to the government? What's your formula? God, there have been so many formulae. There have been so many proposals over the years. And uh, in the end, none of them have really prospered. Uh, so there were all kinds of different, uh, even the, when we were still in the States, I remember that all the different PCGG chairman would come and visit, we would meet. And then papalitan na naman, bago na naman, mag-meet na naman kami. And then when we came back to, to, to the Philippines, we were always trying because nobody wants this uh, kind of legal uh, problem yeah, hanging over your head. 40 years na martial law this year and 28 years na since 86. So, second generation na kayo, third generation. Oh, yun nga. Basta sabi, yun nga, that's also the, the other thing. Is that hindi naman namin siguro pwedeng dapat ipamana sa mga anak namin yung problema ito. So we have to fix this before we die, you know, because uh, uh, it, it's not fair to the kids, you know, to, to have to go through all of these things. But uh, somehow it just has never, we have never found a consensus uh, between the government and, and us, the family. How true is it that Pinoy um, almost agreed to have your father buried in the Libingan and then you know, obviously didn't agree eventually. And you were very vocal, of course, about mm -hmm. how you felt. Not angry, I was extremely disappointed because I really, well, all of us, because uh, he had made pronouncements during the campaign. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think tellingly that was done in up north, in, uh, I believe it was Isabella. Uh, we thought we had found the middle ground, but yes, it was very